for the EFDD, Monsieur Gérard Batten. Vous avez la parole. Mr. Batten, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Soros, I'd like to make a few comments and then ask my question. You began by speaking quite a bit about Brexit. And what you said is that there is buyer's remorse. Well, I can tell you there isn't buyer's remorse in the UK. What there is is a concerted propaganda effort by the media establishment, the political establishment, and the banking and financial establishment to actually try and undermine the result of that referendum, which was very clear. I don't think that you actually get it. You said uh, that the, that the, uh, the pro-Brexit vote was uh, fueled by anti-immigration sentiment. Immigration, over-immigration, uncontrolled immigration, unlimited immigration, which we've had now for many years in the UK, certainly played a part. But what this was really about was a pro-democracy vote. People in England and Wales, anyway, voted to get de back democratic control of their country. Please try to understand that that's what it was really about. You then said that there were two looming crises, a crisis in the financial markets and a crisis, uh, a military crisis, a military threat crisis. Regarding the financial crisis, yes, we can expect one to be deliberately engineered by the crooks in Goldman Sachs and various other financial institutions because I predicted that long before the vote ever took place. There is a real crisis looming, however, which has got nothing to do with Brexit. There is a financial crisis which is coming anyway, and that is because the Eurozone and most of the public finances of European countries are nothing but gigantic Ponzi schemes which are heading for a crash. Whether that, happen, that won't happen because of Brexit, that will happen anyway. That's almost inevitable. Uh, the second one was regarding the military threat. The biggest threat to our safety is actually from the European Union and its foreign policy and military pretensions which are undermining NATO. Contrary to the myth that was put around during the Brexit campaign, the EU has had nothing to do with, prefer with preserving peace in Europe. That was due to democratisation of countries after the Second World War and the NATO fending off the threat from the old Soviet bloc. Now I come to my question. You said that it was tragic that the budget had been reduced to 1.27% of GDP to fund the European Union. Now, I very re rarely agree with EU commissioners, but some time ago, Mr Barroso, when he was president of the Commission, said there should be a euro tax. And I agreed with him, because I said, when the people can see how much this scheme is costing them, that's when they'll want to get out. So I agree with you. Let there be a euro tax, and then when people can see how much this whole project is costing them, then they will be even more determined, not just in Britain, but in all the other countries of the EU, to stay out. But what I'd like to ask you is how much should that tax be? How much of a, uh, a financial burden should ordinary people be prepared to actually sacrifice for the European Union? And when should it be levied? Please put a price on it. And by the way, however big this crisis is, I'd be surprised if you didn't make some money out of it like you usually do. What else uh, uh, can I um, uh, mention in this uh, short uh, time? Um, uh, you do need new forms of taxes uh, uh, eventually, but right now when you have got un unused resources, you, you need to use the untapped resources of the European Union and put uh, people to work and, and, and uh, 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 generate uh, growth. That is the, the key for uh, uh, solving the issues. I, th I think that's probably uh, all I have time for. Merci, Monsieur Soros. Thank you very much, Mr. Soros.